let's talk about 19 things that you might need to know before you go on your next trip. Let's go. Welcome back to my journey fam and to any new guests and returning guests doing a little something different today shaking up the bag I do have a few travel followers from my most recent travel tip to Cabo And so I kind of wanted to feed that family piece again as well So we're going to talk about 19 things you might can use on your next trip to keep you safe and to help things go a little bit smoother So without further ado, let's get into it so of course I have my phone with my notes on it. So if you see me looking down, that's what we're doing, girl. It's our guy, okay? It's it's all right. Let's get into this. So the first thing I thought about is when I go, I'm always making sure that somebody knows where I'm going. So letting people know back home your itinerary information, your flight, your hotel, those things are important. I know you're probably like, Tiffany, I don't owe nobody no explanation of where I'm going. I get you, I got you, I hear you. Find somebody, you don't have to tell everybody. You can find a friend, you can find an acquaintance that you trust. If you are really close with your parents, letting your parents know, it doesn't matter who, just tell somebody somewhere where you are going so that if something were to happen, they know where to even start and trace that back to. So especially things like your hotel and your flight information, those two things they definitely need to know and possibly your like hotel room number because if you came up missing, they need to know quickly where to get to. So find somebody and give them like your basic information in the least. If you want to get detailed do you want to tell them your itinerary and like, hey, we're going with Jungle Boogie tours on this day and this and this on that day. Great. And this was the representative we talked to. So you can do that thing from like as min minimal as you want to all the way to as detailed as you want to. But just make sure that somebody knows the basic information of where you are going, when you're going, and when you're coming back. So that is tip number one. Number two is all about the passport. Now, you know we gotta have one of these to even get anywhere these days. So it's super important because should that thing come up missing, we are now in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. So you want to cover your basis when it comes to your passport. What are the things that you can do? Something I never thought about till talking to one of my cousins, love her. She loves to travel. She's a solo traveler. And she reminded me of something that would be of great value. Make a photocopy of your passport. Okay. Make a copy and do a screenshot of it. Do the screenshot and email it to that trusted person that you just gave your hotel and travel information to. And then your copy that you just made, you're going to fold that baby up and put it in a different area than your passport. So your passport may end up when you get to the hotel room in your bag. That paper copy could be on your person, right? And because you want to make sure that at all costs, you have a way to prove who you are to get back home should something happen in that country, should, should you know, something, God forbid, happen to you. Like, you want to be able to get back home. If somebody stole your passport, you do not want to be stuck in another country trying to fight for your life, trying to get back home. So make sure that you've emailed it to your trusted person. Make sure you even email it to yourself, guys, because emails where paper copies can be taken, got wet, lost all the things if it's in your email it's in your email and we can tap into our emails from anywhere so email it to yourself email it to your person make a photocopy of it and keep it on your person and then you have your physical passport that's usually somewhere in your bag so that is tip number two little extra tip on that I hear that you can add a four digit code to open up a document if you want to make sure that that is secure and safe so for my techie people who are really into that kind of stuff that's something you can do to protect your document that you're sending to your trusted person to yourself through email etc so just want to make sure I add that on okay now let's do number three okay let's talk about number three which is cash all right so you need to pull out some cash but don't pull it all out Pull out some cash because you're going to need cash for 
sometimes transportation, of course, for when you're tipping, and then you just wanna have a little cash on you for the just in case. You never know what's gonna happen. So do pull out a little bit of cash, you know, on the on the islands and things of that sort, they live by tips. And so if you find an awesome person, you definitely want to make sure that you tip them and you want to have that cash on hand and not be having to go to ATMs and get these heavy, um, you know, extra additional fees for pulling out money out of the country and all those things. So kind of budget beforehand how much you want to take for tips and for transportation so that you're not having to swipe your card. So if you need to take a taxi or anything like that, you can have cash on hand. And sometimes you just want it for like souvenirs and things of that sort. So definitely have some cash in your in your wallet and then have some cash that's left back in the bank account. Speaking of that, I have learned that if you go and get like a loadable debit card or you just create an a, 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 like a travel alternative bank account where nothing but travel comes out of that, using those cards that are very isolated and separate from your main accounts where you're direct deposits come in and you pay your bills from could be very beneficial because if that account gets compromised, then that could really jack with everything you have going on. So if you have a loadable card instead of just your regular everyday debit card where you can put money on there and swipe that while you're out of the country or just use an, a separate alternative account for that, that would be very, very helpful and beneficial for you and will protect your assets and everything you have going on back home. So don't know if you ever thought about that, but definitely want to hand that over to you. So either like you could do all cash or you could just have your money in one of those separate debit cards so that it is not tied to your stuff in any kind of way. So yeah. Still with number three, let's talk about making sure with your cash. So you've you've pulled out your cash or you have your, your alternative debit card or whatever in your cash and you're going to the airport. Make sure you count your money before you go to the airport because maybe you've stopped off and got some snacks for yourself or for the kids or got something to eat and you know your cash is a little off so you've kind of lost track of what you have. Stop and count your money before you go into the airport, okay? And then when you go through the checkpoints and you get settled, count your money again. Quick 2.5, when I took my daughter to Disney World, we had cash on us and we had cards on us. And randomly, as we were going through the checkpoints, somehow got pulled over and frisked to the side saying that I had bomb substance on my hand. The most outlandish thing I've ever heard of. And while that was happening, they were also stealing. And so, didn't realize this until after everything had happened. We've already landed in Florida and go to pull out our stuff and there's money and cards missing. So, um, and of course I'm over to the side getting frisked. So I didn't even know it was happening until after it happened. Could never reach anybody at this airport. Could never get my money back or my daughter's money back. I mean, pretty embarrassing you go to the counter and you're about to pull out something and it's not there. So do make sure that you're counting your cash that you have before you go in and afterwards. Not saying that's gonna always happen. I would have never imagined it happen. I've been on many trips and that's never happened. But you know, people cycle through jobs and thieves are thieves. And so you just never know when you're gonna get a hold of one. So do make sure that you're watching them carefully. Don't be afraid to ask questions like, what are you doing? Because at the time I saw the guy had taken my daughter's backpack who had already cleared customs and was searching his her backpack. And I should have known then something wasn't right. And I remember asking like, why is he searching her backpack? But he had his back turned to me, ask the questions, count right then and there if something looks funny. And I just, so I just wanted to give you that little quick tip of like making sure you're keeping up with the amount that you're going and coming with. So I also do not leave cash in the hotel rooms. If I have cash, it is in my fanny pack, my purse, whatever it is, I'm putting it in at all times. So that's number three. Since we're kind of talking about cash, number four is the airport and cash. So something I learned the hard way, my travel agent told me to pull out my cash for traveling. That was the wrongest thing to do. Do not pull out all of your cash. 
we got to that airport and had the cash ready. I made sure I put it to the side and y'all, they didn't want cash, not in the country I was in anyways, you know? And so um, I can't speak about where I, where I flew out of, but when we were trying to come back, we were about to be stuck like Chuck, honey. We were not about to get on nobody's plane because they would not take that cash. I had to go and beg someone next to me who you could tell really didn't want to help to give her the cash to have her swipe her card so that we could get through customs and get on the plane. So do not pull all of your cash out. Leave your cash in there when it comes to the airports. You can have extra money, money on you for if you want to go shopping or you want to go get something to eat. But when it comes to actually checking in and getting through all the things to get on your flight, they do not want the cash. So if you're a travel agent or anyone tells you to do that, do not do it. Had we not done that, we wouldn't even have to wait in line. We could have gone to the kiosk, put our little card in there, boop, 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 hit the little tickets thing, and we would have been done. But instead, I was sitting there stressing the heck out, trying to figure out what in the world to do and who I could get to help us. So do not do that. Keep you some money somewhere on one of the cards, perhaps one of the loadable cards we talked about, or in your travel account, so that you can just swipe your card and keep it moving. Let's talk luggage, number five. So, some of these fancy bags now, and I don't have one yet, y'all gonna get one. Some of these fancy bags already have the fancy lock mechanisms built into it. So awesome, so convenient, so new and cutting edge to me because I'm a little older and we didn't have that growing up. So we had the little traditional locks that you could put on, you know, put the little things together and slide the lock through there and lock it. Um, they do still have those. So for anybody who does not have a newer bag, you can still go and get those little locks and you can order them on amazon i will definitely pop some up and leave them down below in the, the description box you can buy those or you can go buy a newer bag where it automatically has it on there do keep in mind that tsa can still get into it um should they need to keep an eye on them <laughs> but they can still get into it but before that and then when you're in your room it should not be it should be a security blanket for you nobody should be able to get into your bags and so um do check into that with the luggage and make sure that you have some kind of locking mechanism going on guys it's just a new day and it's a new time and not everybody wants to steal from us but there are some people that kind of make their living by taking and so you don't want your trip to be that unfortunate circumstance and so just kind of protect yourself where you can and getting locks on your bag is one of the things you can do another pro tip number six that i would do if i were you is letting the embassy know you're there this might sound a little extra to some people but just think about it if something happens or you had to run or you got lost or taken and you had where are you going the embassy so letting the embassy know when you're there and you've arrived and where you're staying and when your departure will be is a key pro tip to help keeping you safe. They are more opt to do all the things if something were to happen because they already knew that you were there. So find out the local embassy contact, contact them when you get there and let them know you're there and when you're leaving and how many people are with you. And it is just an extra security blanket to keep you safe especially if you're a solo traveler. Okay, tip number seven, you're there, you've already let the embassy know that you're there, your family knows you're there, and you are about to hit the streets. Make sure that that copy of your passport is on your person, your cash is on your person. Here's something else you could do. You could go as fancy with this thing as you want to, or kind of homemade, either way works. So you wanna take some a little bit of cash, and your passport, maybe even a copy of your driver's license, put it in like a sandwich baggie and you can like stick it in. I've seen women stick it in garters, put it around their waist. Um, you can do all kinds of things. Any way to conceal it could be an extra like way of security for you. Um, and then you can carry some cash in your purse of which you would want to spend. So you've got cash on your person for emergency, like somebody snatched your bag in a random place. I'm not going to say any place because I don't want anybody thinking that, oh, you're going to get snatched in this place. But if you go to a place and your bag gets snatched, 
but you have money on you, you can still get what you need to get. So you can go as fancy as I do make these pouches that you can wear around your um, stomach or around your waist to put your things in. I will try to find one and link it for you. I definitely will be investing in that myself as well. Um, and if you don't have money for that, again, my cousin just said she just puts it in a Ziploc bag, seals it up, and she either like um, puts it under a garter that she has on or like tapes it on or whatever. Now, I don't know that I would do necessarily use tape, but I would find some other way of strapping it onto me um, underneath my clothing. And she's like, basically it's flat, you can't see it, but she knows it's there. So should something happen and she gets robbed or whatever, her passport is on her, her ID is on her and she has some cash. So do keep it in mind when you are about to hit the streets. Number eight, flashiness. So I know it's really, really big right now for like YouTubers and everybody to be like super, super dressed up, like girls trips, all the things. And there's nothing wrong with that guys, but just be careful of like all of the name brand flashy things. There are people all over the world that are looking for that kind of stuff. I think you open yourself up to possibly somebody wanting to see more of what you have um there had been a string for a while of break-ins in hotel rooms and sometimes people like staff taking things and so i just think if we're like overly flashy it could paint the illusion that we have a lot of money and a lot of things and when you do that sometimes people want those things and so go on amazon go on shein go on these different sites and dress yourself up with things that look expensive but that are not your you know rolexes and you know big blingy expensive necklaces things that truly are expensive and would cost you a lot if it got taken so want to be super nice and decked out and all the things but make sure that we're not so flashy that we're making people want to come and find out where we are and how to get our things especially when you're going on tours and things like that i want to dress really really minimal really comfortable i understand getting cleaned up and getting fancy for dinner nothing wrong with that but again do we really want to take our five six seven hundred dollar things to this resort and possibly lose them break them or get them stolen so just be careful about the level of flashiness and what kind of flashiness you're doing and how much of it you're doing after all guys you're there to be comfortable have fun enjoy the weather and all the things so just want to be careful Guys, just disclaimer, there are some motorcycles outside doing the very most. So if you hear that, please ignore it. I don't know what's going on and why people decide to have much fun when I'm about to record, but okay. So number nine is um, unpacking expensive things. So let's just say you do take some expensive jewelry because you want to get dressed up at night. It's a super girls trip and y'all are, everybody's getting, you know, blinged out. It's an all white night, whatever. And you have your expensive jewelry. There are safes in the rooms. I'm not sure how safe the safes are um, because, of course, some staff do know, you know, how to, to do things. But it's better than leaving those things out on display. I've seen so many YouTubers uh, pan the room. And I don't know if it's for show or if this is really what they do. But, you know, they've got the little desk and they've got all their expensive, you know, thousands of dollars of jewelry laid out and the expensive perfume set up on the counters and all the things yeah i mean unless you don't plan on getting your room clean i just think it's so risky i really really do and so for me for me guys and you do whatever you want to do for me i'm going to put my stuff up i'm going to put my stuff up it's first of all i'm not going to bring super expensive things and then what i do bring will probably be put up and so you have your safes that you can use and then if you have a locked bag you can use your locked bag i generally do try to start unpacking a little bit more on my trips because i've never really done that i've usually kind of live out of my suitcase for safety reasons um but i usually bring like the little packing cubes and it's just the basic generic stuff in there that if somebody took that i'm not gonna miss that and it's not gonna be much in there for you to be taken so um i will usually use the packing cubes and put those in the drawers and and i know how neatly arranged everything is and so i can tell if anything's been messed with or touched but my things that are expensive usually stay in my bag and so definitely be careful about unpacking all of your expensive jewelry and things while you're there, especially if you're getting your room cleaned, um, because you just never know, guys. 
Number 10 is try not to look like the foreigner that you are. <laughs> I mean, of course, if you go certain places, they're gonna know possibly you don't live there, right? But also, even if you do look that way, you don't wanna look like you're totally lost in the sauce. You wanna look like, I know where I'm going, I don't need your help, and I don't need your misguidance or your trickery or foolery, right? And so, if you've already done enough research on the area of where you're going, who you're looking for, what it's gonna look like, how much it costs, all the things, that means you're on a mission and you know where you're going and can I be derailed. I think that people who are mean, mean no good and are up to no good are looking for the people that look lost. That has definitely happened to me before. And if you've seen this video, then you kind of know all about what happened on my trip and we were about to be a whole extra taken five. I don't even know what taken we own now. <laughs> But we were about to be a whole taking number, whatever, four, five we own, okay? It was not good. And we were pegged because you could tell we didn't quite know where we were and what was happening. So definitely make sure that you do your homework on whatever you're about to do, where you're about to go, so that you kind of are as like knowledgeable as you can be and you don't stand out. Because when you stand out, you become a target. So... This one's kind of iffy, but I'm going to do a little bit more homework on it. Pepper spray. And so I know that some countries it is illegal to bring pepper spray in there. And then some you can go there and buy it. And so do your homework on it before you go to that country. And if you're able to bring it, definitely clutch if you can bring it with, with because then that means you're gonna have that little extra security um, with or around you. What items can we take that are not prohibited to be taken on a plane and taken into the country, but can still be used for safety? So check and see if you can bring pepper spray, especially my women, and especially my women with children or solo travelers. Can you bring some of the things that we use in the US there for safety purposes? Do your homework, and if you can, honey, take it, because you just never know. Number 12 is, you not gonna know. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but this kind of goes with the pepper spray and protection kind of thing, especially if you're solo travel traveler, sorry, uh, or a traveler like me where I'm often going with my daughter. Um, do not let people know that you are going to be there by yourself or that it's just you and your daughter or just you. When someone asks like, hey, are you just here by yourself? I mean, you can kind of get a feel of like, if somebody is just another traveler just like you. I mean, me walking down the beach in my last trip, we met many people on the way. Um, hi, lady. <laughs> we met many people on the way who you knew were just part of other families, you know? They weren't trying to seek anything out of you, anything like that just genuinely sweet people wanting to get to know, like, where are you from? And oh, like da 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 But if it's a random person stopping you, a random man, a random anything like, hey, so who you here with? Uh-uh. A whole bunch of, my whole family, my husband, I don't even have a husband. My husband, oh yeah, my husband's gonna be down here in about 10, 15 minutes or so. Like, you don't even have to give a time. You can just say my husband's on his way, you know, because to be honest, giving time might actually give them time. And so just saying like, oh, my husband's here, or I'm here with, you know, my whole family. Even if you're not, making sure you don't ever paint the picture that you're there by yourself for somebody to come back and then find you if they wanted to. Um, you don't want to make yourself a target. And I think people that are by themselves can be targets of many things, not just being taken, but also being like, do like, tricked into different financial situations and all kinds of things and so you just want to be careful to make sure you do not disclose that you're a solo traveler unless the person absolutely feels and looks safe um, but if somebody's kind of prying or you just met them and you hadn't got a good feel for them please do not just say like oh yeah i'm here by myself my 50th birthday no don't do it don't do it i'm here with two or three other people we're just all doing our thing right now so just want to hand you that. 13 is communication. So learn the hard way in Jamaica. Using your phone, unless you have international phone service, is going to drive your phone bill through the roof. If you can, um, download the app WhatsApp. 
WhatsApp is so clutch. If that person has WhatsApp and you have WhatsApp, you can communicate with them for the free 99, okay? And so make sure you download that app. It does not work if they don't have it, but most foreigners do have it. My Jamaican friend and um, travel driver is the one who told us to get that app. And we didn't do it. Uh, at the time, it was me and my uh, ex-boyfriend that went to Jamaica and we didn't do it. And his phone bill was sky high. I actually still talk to my Jamaican friend today through WhatsApp because you can keep in contact with them. It's so cool and so neat to do. So definitely check into that app and download it if you can because you never know when you might need to use it or when you can use it. You can also communicate with your family back home through that same app. So your trusted person downloads the app and you download the app, then you guys can have recorded conversation or text without any charge through the app. So make sure you get the WhatsApp. Number 14 is safety gear. This can be for anybody, but I am particularly alluding to or talking about this solo traveler, especially people that like to stay in Airbnbs or hostels or um, the little like boutique motel hotels. There are safety gear items that you can get off of Amazon that can help you when you go to these little particular places. I don't think all of them work when it comes to just hotels or resorts because of the way the doors are made and things of that sort. But look into where you're going. That means doing your homework and seeing which of these you might can use. So I know there are door stops that you can buy. There's door latches, there's door alarms, there's all kinds of things. And I will definitely be popping up a couple of them on the screen um, and leave them down in the, in the description below but if you just type in on Amazon um, travel safety items you're going to pull up a host of different things but you want to make sure that if you're going to any of those places that you do that I was watching a girl's video and she was in one of those like boutique hotels and next thing you know middle of the night somebody's coming into her locked room um, and she had no clue to they were already standing over her so um, not to scare you or anything of the sort but in a hotel situation, it just seems like there's so much movement and, and all of that, that it's, it's harder for somebody to do that versus these Airbnbs and hostels and, and the boutiques and things of that sort. I think it was an actual boutique that that happened in. So um, we'll definitely be leaving some links below um, for those type of items that you can go and read up on if that's kind of your zhuzh that you'd like to stay in versus a traditional resort, um, just to make sure that you have a little bit of extra safety. 15 booking tours. I particularly love to use TripAdvisor. I know that the travel agents were like, don't use that. I have never had a problem on TripAdvisor. I will say the hardest part about TripAdvisor is trying to figure out if the transportation is included or not, and also how to get your money back should something happen. Um, but TripAdvisor has never failed me. I love reading the reviews on there. And usually in the reviews, guys, people will tell you whether transportation is included or not, if it's good or not. It will tell you all the things. You just have to take the time to read it. So I love TripAdvisor. Um, outside of TripAdvisor, you know, every resort and hotel has their built-in, um, you know, trip specialists that you can go to and book trips through and with that usually do include transportation because you're getting it done from the hotel so usually they're going to come and pick you up and you know and drop you off and all the things they are sometimes a little bit higher one and two they don't always tell the truth because i have booked many tours where they tell me one thing and we get there and it's, it's something else so um i don't like booking through hotels but that is another way to book um the third way is just kind of going on the beach and seeing what they have in Cabo all the way down the beach. It was, you couldn't even take four steps without somebody stopping you to try to book a tour. Um, that's kind of scary because you kind of don't know what you're getting. Um, you can get better prices, but you kind of don't know what you're getting. So uh, example, glass bottom boat, we had an image of one boat we were trying to get to, but ends up getting a really good price for another one. Our tour guide was very nice and very cool, but it wasn't the kind of boat that we were going for. And so you kind of just, you know, got to take that booking with a grain of salt, but you may get some really good prices just by walking down strips and, and very popular areas where there are bookings. And so you can book several different ways. To me, again, the best way is TripAdvisor. That's who I use every time. That's why I post my reviews. That's why I read my reviews because you're going to learn all the things from those reviews. And so that is my take on that. Um, always safety first. Try not to go into like 
areas where like it has nothing to do with tours and they're offering your tour again if you've seen my last travel vlog that is part of what happened is we kind of went off the beaten path and some lady was talking about touring a new hotel and it sounded so great and so good she even did the whole phone call making thing and then later on it was like completely 1000 percent taken sketch okay so just be careful stay on the path um, and do it on either an app trusted app like TripAdvisor through the hotel or kind of where everybody else is where you could easily stop somebody who just got off a tour and say hey what did you think about that tour how was it how much was it you know and so those are the trusted paths for booking 16 is make a hotel buddy or buddies i'm gonna say buddies because i really think you need to just hang with me on this so one find someone who looks kind of like you i mean is it somebody from the u.s or from canada or from wherever you're from and you can understand them and they can understand you and they've already been there that is the key find somebody who knows your language and who's already been there a while to talk to they're gonna know all the secrets to where you're just landing at they're gonna tell you where the best food is the best drinks are all the tips and tricks to that hotel where to find everything that you don't know anything about what to avoid all the things they're going to know it guys i saw it happen and then we became it as we were getting ready to leave and so we found some friends they told us all about all the things that we could do and how to do it and then before we left we were able to help people avoid some of the beach problems that were there because we had figured out the trick to what was happening so make a buddy that you can talk to and communicate with and then the second buddy you want to make is a hotel buddy like somebody that works there that does a service there and that is going to take care of you if you saw my Cabo vlog, there was a Kevin there, um, and he was just so awesome. And guys, you get to know these people. Once you find somebody and you really like them and they're, they do good service for you and you tip them, they're going to be your bestest friend, okay? But also, there's more value in that. You get to know the person, you get to know about their living circumstance and their family, and it makes you want to give to them even more. And it makes the fact that you're giving to them mean something even more they in turn are going to take very good care of you and whatever it is that you and your family needs 17 charging banks listen if you don't have one go get one i will tell you there are several different type of charging banks there's your traditional one whereas you know you've got to bring your cord and you know you plug it into your phone now they have these new ones that you can like slap onto the back of your phone and it charges and then they have the ones that like are slender and thin and sleek that have their own little cords that pull out of them that you can use. I don't care what kind you get, y'all, they are valuable. From the plane to the hotel to your tours, you need a charging bank like the plague. Disney World, we were off seeing the most awesome thing and what happens? The phone dies and we couldn't even record it. I wasn't even vlogging then, but I was just so sad because so many awesome things around us were happening and we couldn't capture it. And so make sure that you have an external battery pack. You can get them off of Amazon. You can get them from Best Buy, um, all kinds of things. I will definitely link the one below that I have. I really, really love it. Um, it has two ports on it and that sucker holds a charge for forever. I will say it's more old school old school in the sense that it doesn't have cords already built into it you do have to plug it in and carry it around it is kind of big and bulky but you are going to get your money's worth because it is going to charge and charge and charge and so um make sure that you get a charging cord port because you need to charge up your devices especially if you're a vlogger or you just might need to charge up your items and guys, like some of the places don't have normal plugs. So you need to charge your phone. And you may be at one of the functions that need to charge your phone. And you don't have to go all the way back to the room or all the way back to an area just to charge. So get you a charging port. 18, guys, is something that I actually should have put at the top when we were talking about preparing to leave for the trip, but weighing your bags. Make sure you weigh your bags before you get to the airport, especially if you're an overpacker like me. Do not wait till you get to the airport and get that extra $60, $30 charge because your bag is too heavy. Listen, 
You can buy the scales from Target, Amazon, Walmart, the little handheld, you put it on the strap of your suitcase, you lift it up and it tells you how much your bag weighs. Or you can get real creative like me, let me tell you. <laughs> My scale did not come in on time, my little handheld scale, so I just canceled it. Y'all, we went and got my little glass um, um, scale and put it in the hallway on a flat wood surface and set the bags on there. Do you know it worked? <laughs> it worked. So however you have to do it, I don't, you know, call it what you will, but we didn't have no extra charges. So weigh your bags before you get there so you know what to expect and you're not sitting there holding your breath hoping that this bag that's about to topple over because it's so full um is not going to be an extra charge for you 19 last one is your essentials i could go on and on and on about what essentials that you need but only you know what you need i will tell you some of the essentials that i bring for me, I am a low-key germaphobe. Just a low-key one, y'all. It's, it's all right. And I will often bring several items for myself, my daughter, whoever's traveling with me, just because it makes me feel better when I'm in my hotel room. So take this with a grain of salt. You can use this, not use this, but you can fill in the blanks with whatever you want to fill in the blanks with. What makes me feel comfortable when I am away from home. So for me, I will often bring shower shoes for me and whoever's with me. I don't trust nobody's cleaning skills but mine. Um, I have seen some disgusting things in my day because I've had people that have worked in different industries and I've seen oh, and heard a lot. And so shower shoes are a must for me. I'm not walking on nobody's, no, nobody's floor. Um, and I've seen mold in some of these showers on some of these trips. And so shower shoes is a must. You can get those on Amazon. You can get those at Target. Excuse me, guys. I do have allergies. So nose is running away from me. You will see me scratching my nose. But you can get those shower shoes almost anywhere. I will definitely link some below. But again, you can also go to Target and find some, which is where I mainly get most of mine or, um, walmart every now and then but mainly target and amazon so make sure you get you some shower shoes if you're like me i will often bring a pillowcase you don't have to do this um i even heard some stars do this actually um but we will usually bring our own pillowcases sometimes um especially because of my hair the kind of hair that i have um i have to have like silk pillowcases and so often i will bring them and then just for like cleanliness reasons sometimes i will bring them and put them over the pillowcases there my seem kind of extra to some people but it's not about some people it's about you and what makes you feel comfortable in your room and if you feel comfortable not doing that then you don't have to and if for some reason you want to then you can um and then a blanket blankets for the airplane because sometimes it is freezing on there and so there's these little pillow blankets that you can buy we'll definitely leave those link below um and sometimes you're just in your hotel room you're like i don't want to mess up the bed but i'm tired and i just want to lay down or sit in this chair and it's cold you can have like a little thin blanket that you can bring with you and then something that goes with me on every single trip i don't care if it's a staycation a shortcation a vacation a vacation is a can of lysol honey i am taking my lysol on every trip i go to and i am we are spraying everywhere i am spraying <laughs> i have not gone as far yet as to bring like cleaning wipes but Lysol goes with me everywhere and I am spraying door handles, toilet handles, toilet seat, sink knobs. I'm spraying the bed down at night and the pillowcases when we're getting ready to lay down. Like I am spraying everything and that's for my peace of mind and it makes me feel better about life and what I'm about to get into. You guys, you think things are clean until you know what you know. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna say like I went to one hotel and pulled back the sheets and look i don't know what else is brown but it was brown smears all over it there were pube hairs all on the ground in the bathroom all over the toilet seat there were pube hairs in the towels i was just like and this was not a this is like a newer hotel this was not no like i don't say anything ghetto y'all we don't we don't we don't do ghetto over here i'm i'm very extra and so i'm like what is happening here? I was like totally dysregulated. And I'll just say that to say that is why I bring Lysol on my trips because you don't know the level of clean that somebody's actually 
doing. Obviously, that room got a hold of somebody who didn't like their job for that day or had something better to do than change those sheets and those towels and really clean up. I was appalled. So, just saying, I bring my lights all everywhere. That is it. That's, that's my 2.5 there. All right, guys, we are about done. But before we go, I'm going to give you two bonuses two bonuses okay the first one is learn part of the language of where you are going it is so beneficial to learn somewhat of the language before you go so there's not so tough of a language barrier so you can download duolingo duolingo i think it's called it's super cute super fun it's kind of like childish looking but it's it's still so cute and fun and you can definitely learn some essential words off of there or you could just do research in other ways and watch videos and things like that i'm sure there's probably some travel language videos out there that you can watch do your homework and learn some of the languages language that you're going to like you want to know bathroom you want to know you know different things about food and like you know transportation like what do you need what words do you feel like you will need while you're there. Let's say you don't eat beef and you only eat fish. You need to learn what fish is in the language that you're going to. Does that make sense? Okay. So making sure you're learning some of the language. They also have an app called the Language Translator app. That's another thing that I had um, downloaded. And so you can do that so that you can actually like make it play and it can tell the person what you're trying to say. Also, if you have, a, have an iPhone and you type a message and you hold it down, you can actually hit translate in what language and it will translate it into that language. And if they're able to, you know, read and write their language, you can just show it to them and they can also figure out what you need that way too. So learn some of the language about where you're going and it will be so helpful to you and it will kind of break that language barrier down a little bit more for you. Bonus number two is, did you know that you can bring your purse as part of your carry-on? I don't know where I lost this piece at, but it seemed like before they had told me I could not bring a purse and a backpack or a purse and a, a small tote. I had to pick one or the other. And now they're saying you can bring both. So you can bring your purse and you can have a small carry on and it's just counted as one. So if you have another person, you can actually bring like four things on the plane instead of just the traditional two. I thought that was super cool because I thought, man, I don't want to have to leave my purse because I, I don't want to pay an extra charge. But seems like I can't remember where I went last. They were telling me it's one or the other, but now it's, which I never understood because people can bring baby bags and a tote. That's two bags. But I thought, okay, it's for babies. Maybe there's provisions for that. But now I was able to bring my purse and my bag and my daughter was able to bring a beach bag and her backpack. So just in case you didn't know like me, just in case you didn't know, there's that. Guys, thank you so very much for joining me today um, on my little travel tip journey. I love to travel. And so these are just some things that I've learned along the way of my travels, things that I do. You do not have to do them. You don't even have to like them. <laughs> There's just, these are just things that I wanted to share with some people. There may be some new travelers out there, some young travelers, some solo travelers, and there may be some seasoned travelers who just have never thought of some of the things that maybe I'm talking about. I don't know. What I would love is if you have some tips, please drop them down below in the comments and share with everybody so that we can all continue to learn from one another. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you are part of my journey fam, I love you to death. If you are a returning guest, please consider joining the, joining the journey fam. We would love to have you over here on the nice and cool side because it is finally fall. And if you are a guest, thank you for joining me today in any capacity. I hope that you guys have found this valuable. And if so, to support my channel, please click the like button. I will see you in the next video.